Get ready because this is the slant. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Stephanie Bay, and this week I'm joined with our very own and beautiful, talented, and color-coordinated, not planned, Miss Connie Lee. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Guys, I'm so glad to be here. Happy Thursday to all of you at home. Hope you guys are feeling artsy, because this week's episode is sure to bring out your creative side. First, AC catches up with a group that believes there's a writer inside of everyone. Then Christine Astle sits down with a teacher who has a painter's touch. Later, we'll go old school with a DJ whose mixes were all the craze in Chicago back in the 90s, and we'll see what he's been up to since. Then we'll get you fired up with some martial arts, and finally, we'll get the studio rocking with beats from Bugwees. All right, guys, what do you say we get started? Connie, would you like to do the honors? I'd love to. Thank you, Steph. All right, for those of you out there who love to write but feel like you never have someone you can comfortably share your writing with, well, worry no more. Our very own AC sits down with a group who believes that there's a writer inside of all of us. Canadian native Cohen Poon has been an active member of the Neighborhood Writing Alliance for well over a year. But what brings Poon to Chicago and the NWA is the true diversity of the program through writings from people who come from various neighborhoods and backgrounds. I believe very much that diversity is very much a fabric of why it's exciting to live in Chicago. Every person from various socioeconomic, cultural uh, backgrounds come together on a weekly basis to really dialogue with each other through the arts and through their writing and sharing about themselves and how they see the world and then that creates an interesting connection with within the community that may not normally happen by you know us taking the CTA. NWA program director Rupal Sony explains what the nonprofit organization is all about. So the Neighborhood Writing Alliance is a nonprofit in the city of Chicago that puts together writing workshops and programs all free and available um, in neighborhoods that don't have access to much other free programming um, outside of GED classes and ESL uh, kinds of things so that um, just normal people in neighborhoods have access to a uh, place to to share their stories with other people from the neighborhood and build community in that way and start working towards positive changes in their communities. What is most unique about the NWA is the book it publishes four times a year called the Journal of Ordinary Thought. Everybody that uh, participates in our workshops, um, which are all ongoing and in the neighborhoods that we work in, uh, write down their stories and we publish all of them every writer at least once a year if not more often and the whole purpose of it is to not only document the stories in the neighborhoods but to to validate those stories and those experiences and also have a way for them to share them with other people in the neighborhood we give them out for free in all of the neighborhoods that we work in and we also send them out to a subscription list of about I think we're up to like 800, 900 something people, including the aldermen and the decision makers in the neighborhoods that we work in, the people in the media that are representing these neighborhoods, um, and just different people that we think might um, benefit from understanding a different perspective. You know, the NWA allows you to express your personal feelings, and that's basically what the group is uh, for, is to expand your own personal life and get yourself out there and like many of us in the group have been writing with the group for quite a while so what happens is that we we vary we write about ourselves and our personal lives and then maybe sometimes we'll throw in fiction piece or poetry pieces sometimes that are very moving because we are writing about our own lives I'm interested in making uh, writing accessible and to understand that everyone has a story to tell this is AC for The Slant. So, do you like to write stuff? Yeah, I love to write. It's been a while, but when I was little, I wanted to write for TV shows and movies. Oh, that's very cute. A childhood dream. Yep. Very nice. Thanks. Well, if you guys want to learn more about the NWA or how you can help out or participate, you can visit their website at www.jot.org. 
That just sounds like a great way to express your creative side, really. Let's just keep this baby rolling. If you go to DePaul, you may have seen this next guest in the classroom. Laura Kina is a teacher with a passion for the arts. Our very own Christine Astle sits down with Laura in this week's Spotlight Profile. Some might know her as a professor, but to others, she's Laura Kina, the artist. Raised in a small Norwegian town in Polsbo, Washington, Kina says she found art through her mom. But she had wanted to be an artist, and so um, she decided to pass along those things to me, and she had me painting and drawing every day when I was a kid. And she took me to museums, and I just really fell in love with making art. So it was always sort of the first way that I processed the world. Kina's inspired by her surroundings. Her most recent work, Aloha Dreams, was created by recounting her family's history in Hawaii as sugar plantation workers. Her art also portrays Asian Americans and multiracial issues. I have one series, um, The Loving vs. Virginia, that's inspired by the Loving vs. Virginia Supreme Court case um, which over, in 1967, which overturned the last anti-miscegenation law. Um, so I used that as inspiration to create a series called Loving. Um, where I did charcoal portraits in black and white of people who were mixed race, uh, who were born after 1967. And so in that series, they're sitting cross-legged um, in a circle around each other. And you don't, first of all, know what their race is. Um, you just see them. You see them as individuals with tattoos, with jewelry, with their clothes. That's how you see people, right? In other series, like the one that's behind us right here, um, it's called Hapa Soap Operas. Um, and that was a series where I was doing photographs and then paintings of people who are mixed race Asian um, across the United States. And I would put them together in these fantastic oil paintings. And then some of them were turned into Bollywood style movie posters with flashing lights around them. When Kina's not painting, she's teaching at DePaul University. I can tell she really, really loves what she's doing because she's very passionate about it. In class, she discusses Asian American arts and culture with her students. She's also the director of DePaul's Asian American Studies Department and helped launch the minor in 2005. I went to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago for undergrad, and at that time um, it was at the height of multiculturalism, and we actually had an Asian American literature class that I got to take, and that just really changed my world. I remember, you know, reading Frank Chin um, and Sean Wong and so many other authors, and for the first time, reading stories that were similar to things that I had experienced growing up. So that was a really powerful thing to see this history in print in an institution as part of my education. I never saw that before. Because of that experience, I realized that it's a, it's a really important thing that, that this be part, that our stories, our history be part of everyone's education. Kina is currently working with another professor on an exhibition and book that will be called War Baby Love Child Mixed Race Asian American Art. Now Kina's even inspired me to start painting. We here at this Slant would like to personally thank Laura for sitting down with us and wish her the best of luck down the road. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go far because coming up, the musical stylings of Bugwees. Stay right here. <laughs> 